Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I want to make show you how you can make a real-time analytics pipeline using Apache Flink and Apache Kafka. A lot of times people think you have to use one or the other. You have to either use Kafka or Flink and they're really not the same thing. Uh, Kafka is, is best used as a message broker whereas Flink is best used as a you know per record transformation engine, um, which is coincidentally exactly what you need for a real-time analytics pipeline, you know, where each time you bring in a new piece of data, you need to transform it and add it to you know whatever kind of backend you're using for a dashboard um, or any kind of you know time series analysis, really whatever analytics use case, it doesn't matter. The key point here is showing you how you can have a pipeline that's constantly transforming and adding data to a backend database so that it's constantly updating whatever dashboard is sitting on top of that database. So without further ado, let's get into it and start writing our Flink script. So we're gonna be writing our Flink script in PyFlink um, just because that's my preferred method for writing Flink scripts, um, just because I like Python. Um, and we're not going to need a ton of packages and requirements for this use case because a lot of the logic is just contained using, you know, just SQL statements essentially. Um, and so for here we have, you know, we're importing just PyFlink data stream, stream execution environment, and PyFlink table for the stream table environment and environment settings. Um, and these are just two different, so stream execution environment with Flink, if you're not familiar, basically sets up a data stream and sets us an object that says, hey, we're going to process data as it comes into this data stream. And then PyFlink table allows you to have a static table that you're adding things to and deleting um, and transforming data within a table. So once we've imported these, we're then going to start defining our core function here. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is just define main and then set up our environment with the stream execution environment. So here we're going to be creating and initializing an Apache Flink execution environment for us to start processing our data in. Since I'm just running this on my local machine, I'm going to set parallelism to one. But in a real Flink production use case, the big advantage of Flink is actually that you can set this parallelism to a really high level and have a lot of really small compute nodes that are each processing uh, one data point at a time, but doing that at a really large scale. So if you're you know, doing things like real-time analytics at Netflix or Facebook, this is the kind of setup you would have, really high degree of parallelism within your code because you want to make use of all the compute you have available. Then we also are going to set the environment settings to streaming mode. Um, so there's multiple modes for Flink, but we want specifically to be in, Flint in streaming mode. Flink can switch between streaming and batch, which is, again, a nice little benefit of it. Then we're going to create a stream table environment. And this is like I talked about the table that we're going to be storing our data in temporarily um, and processing it in. Um, and then we also are going to just set our local time zone to UTC, uh, just so we have a standard date time to work with and we don't get confused by anything related to that down the line. So now that we have our environment set up, first thing we're going to need to do is set up a Kafka source. Um, so here, what we're going to do is within our table environment, we're going to execute this SQL um, to effectively act as a landing page for our Kafka uh, connector. So this Kafka connector, imagine, is producing some data that we're then consuming to process and add to our backend analytics dat, uh, dashboard. Um, and here I'm collecting or creating a table that's gonna contain all the information that I'm pulling from this Kafka producer. So here, user ID, event type, timestamp, what page they accessed, what their agent was, um, and then a watermark for timestamp, again, pulling the current time zone. Um, and you can see here, connector we're using is Kafka. The topic is just user events. This is, imagining I'm learning uh, Kafka on my own local machine. If you wanna see how to do that, I have another video on how to set up Kafka and run it here. Um, then also setting a group ID so we can group our property, our different Kafka uh, services together because we'll eventually have other Kafkas uh, we're using here later, so as a sync as well. Um, and then we're also just gonna use earliest offset to give us the earliest offset piece of data. So that's our just initial Kafka source setup. So that's just effectively acting as a blank table landing zone for our Kafka data. Then what we're gonna do is create a dead letter Kafka topic for handling bad events. Um, so this is basically a way to say, hey, any bad events that arrive um, in a raw mode from our user events DLQ. So if, you know, instead of our regular user events, we're actually creating a separate one to segment, you know, any kind of broken or uh, corrupted data um, or just any kind of bad data. And so we can segment it out of our good data into a separate table. 
even if we might want to capture that you know for other purposes downstream as well and so if you're not familiar with the phrase dead letter queue it's just a special type of message queue that temporarily stores messages that a software system cannot process due to errors <clears throat> so here storing this down here um, and then the next thing we will add to our script is to do some static geo enrichment so imagine now I'm going to actually enrich this user data. So common use case is you know you're going to need to join the data or add additional data points from other systems. You know maybe use their user ID to have their customer history brought in. In this case, it's going to look up what country their user ID came from, um, and this you know using just a temporary CSV file that theoretically would contain all my user IDs and which country they came from as well. Um, so just showing you how you can do a very typical data enrichment. And then next, we're going to create a Postgres sync table. Um, and so this will be the second table we're going to use, which is going to be the place we're actually storing our data and what will act as the backend for our analytics dashboard. So here we have in table environment creating our new table, so our sync table. It's only containing the transform data that we want. Um, so here we have our page URL, the country that they came from, so that we got from that ge geological CSV. Um, the event minute, which is the timestamp we're getting from UTC. We also have unique users, which is a you know, amount of unique users after we aggregate it. So you'll see a couple of things as well. Uh, later on, we're going to aggregate to get to this. Um, also, the amount of page views. So again, stored as a big int, so it's going to be an aggregate value of page views. Um, and also saying primary key not enforced because there's going to be many page views, you know, for or many entries for each country. The real unique identifier is going to be a timestamp. Um, and then here we have our Postgres table information. So the connector you're going to use, in this case, JDBC. Then we also have our Postgres SQL uh, database location, the table name, then also putting in you know, Postgres username, password, and the driver we're using as well. Um, so JDBC knows what type of database driver to use to connect to Postgres. Um, so next thing we're going to do is now actually do some of the data cleaning that I just showed you to get to that final end state. Um, so here, next thing we're going to execute is going to be another table environment command to create a temporary view, clean events, selecting all from user events raw, where the user ID, so not all non-null events and event type was page view, so they accessed a page, and they weren't like bot, so using basic bot filtering here too. Um, so user agent is essentially as a proxy for whether or not they are a bot. Um, so here, filtering that out and creating a t clean view, so first level of events, um, so I don't accidentally transform or process any data that isn't relevant um, because why well, spend the compute on that, right? Then next thing I'm going to do is deduplicate using row number uh, as my unique identifier here. So here I'm creating a temporary view, deduped events, selecting all from this clean table. Um, or here I'm saying, hey, row number, uh, making sure that each row number is unique. Um, and that there is no duplicate row. Um, this is also where you could look for any other kind of identifier to deduplicate here from clean events um, and just making sure that there are no duplicate values or duplicate entries for the same set of information. Um, and yeah, that's really all that's happening within here. Uh, next step is going to be also uh, the main aggregation. So this is where you know, after we've cleaned it out, we've taken out any duplicates, any nulls, any potential bots. We are then going to execute some SQL to actually aggregate it all together and insert it into that page view ag, which is going to, you know, obviously uh, insert everything into this format we just saw here under, um, you know, page URL every minute, the amount of total page views. Um, so here we have insert into our page view aggregate for every entry in page URL in country, um, and then also, you know, using tumble start which is a way to have a fixed size non-overlapping time window to segment data streams for analysis so this basically means that hey we're only going to process this data stream once when i run this command again it's not going to reprocess this data it's going to process another uh, time stream right um, and using event minute as the unique identifier so only processing each interval each minute once so it'll check hey has this processed this event minute before then we also have the count of distinct user IDs and the count of total page views that each user had for our aggregate view from that deduplicated events. 
then joining it into GeoLookup Geo with user ID. So we're joining these those two files together here um, so that we also have the country data for each user ID. Um, and then again, grouping by them by the interval of one minute using that tumble function again and page URL and country. Um, so then now that we have all of our SQL functions all built out, the only thing left we have to do is just declare main to run it all. So here, all we do at the bottom is just say, hey, name equals main, um, and then run our PyFlink script. So once you run this PyFlink script, this will then look at that Kafka's queue, say any piece of data that is arrived from there, process it, store it then into that backend Postgres database. And it'll keep running until you stop this Python script. So that was all I want to show you today. Just you know, really simple, but really powerful tool. Um, hope you learned something. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Did it out.